Welcome this morning in the name of Christ Jesus, gathered gathered in the Holy Spirit. We are here uh, this morning to celebrate the Feast of uh, Pentecost, which of course took place uh, this past Sunday, and we were uh, we were blessed. Uh, in addition to it being Pentecost, we had the rite of confirmation uh, for ten uh, ten young people uh, gathered here, and it was a, a wonderful, wonderful morning. And we we want to continue to uh, keep these young people in our prayer prayers that they may uh, grow in, in ways of discipleship. They have been given, as we talked about, they have been given a, a solid foundation. Um, and, and thanks, again, we, we, we want to thank Pastor Berglund especially for, you know, he, he jumped in, uh, you know, at a, at a time when, uh, you know, there was a bit of uh, confusion and what do we do now, um, but he, he taught them well and uh, I, I got to come along for the ride, so that was quite nice. And I, I, I had to chuckle too, you know, when, with, with uh, you know, our Lord says the wind, the, the spirit blows where it wills, and so that, that means we're always, as, as his baptized people, we're, we're always on this adventure. And, 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 and kind of in a humorous way, on, on Sunday morning at the first service, that, that played itself out, because uh, I had washed my owl the day before, I had thrown it in the car, and, and, and so, uh, you know, I come in here to the church and it's about, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get dressed. And I realized, oh my, I left my alp in the car. So I just, you know, trotted down the stairs here, uh, went to get my alp and the car is locked. And I don't have the key. Where's my lovely wife? Well, I, thankfully she was in the church and she was sitting in the pew and I came down and I sat next door and, 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 and and Bob Sells uh, behind me and he goes, well, who's working up front today? <laughs> I, I thought, well, I thought you were. <laughs> Honey, do you have the key for the car? <laughs> so, so I already know it was, it was a nice, so warm day and I was kind of scrambling to get dressed and got the perspiration going before the first service, so it was all good. But um, in, in addition to that uh, humorous moment, uh, we continue to pray for Pastor Rep and his family. Uh, I, as far as I know, he's, he's making it official today by signing the required documents from the NALC. And uh, so we'll continue to pray for him. And uh, you know, we don't have an exact date for his arrival yet. Uh, so just you know, keep, keep him and his family in your prayers. Uh, this is uh, a joyful time for everyone. Uh, but you know, at the same time, when I mean, any time a family has to pick up and move, there's there's always that, and uh, he'll he'll need our prayers regarding that. Also, um, uh, the new uh, we have new pyramids that you see before us, and uh, you know this uh, this comes from uh, the pyramids, uh, comes from the memorial uh, team, and uh, also there's new communion where we dedicated both of those uh, at the first service on Sunday. And again, these new gifts and bringing beauty into the house of the Lord are, are, are because of your generosity and your thinking of the, thinking of the Lord, thinking of the Lord first. Uh, you know, we're blessed with the beautiful sanctuary here. We strive to uh, not only keep it that way, but continue to improve upon it. You know, the great cathedrals of Europe, you know, a lot of times in our modern thinking, well, you know, why, why did people go to great expense, you know, to, to make that, to, to build these magnificent cathedrals? And we think, well, it was done by the rich and the wealthy. Well, that's not true. The cathedrals were built by the common folk and by those who were very poor by our standards today because the Lord meant something to them. The Lord meant something to them, and so they gave... They gave their sweat equity, you know, to build these cathedrals. Uh, these were not rich people, uh, but they wanted a beautiful cathedral that would just cry out the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, there, there, there's a, there's a part of us in us, and, and, I, and I call it the, uh, you know, the Judas economy. Well, why did we waste all that money on that? Because it's a good thing to do, period. Okay. 
So, that being said, we continue to beautify uh, the house of the Lord here at Emmanuel. And Wes, am I forgetting something? Well, I, I would have to just, you, you said humorous about the first service. Can you tell them what happened at the second service? That would be interesting with the hearts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Yeah, I think the spirit was definitely blowing uh, in unexpected ways. Because uh, uh, right after the prayer of the day and Joelle was about to uh, launch into her uh, beautiful uh, soul, and a car horn started beeping out there. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so uh, Chris Pyrick was a lecturer, and he and I were kind of looking out the door. Now, where's that one? And, well, we, 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 we identified that one, and then another one went. So, so, and so Joel thankfully started, once we got things uh, quieted down, uh, uh, Joel sang her beautiful solo uh, again, so, yeah. Gathered in the Holy Spirit today, our, our Old Testament readings from the prophet Ezekiel, the Lord calls them out to a very special place. Our epistle reading is the story of Pentecost. Luke reporting uh, that first Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts. And our gospel reading is Jesus continuing to tell us about the goodness of the Spirit and how it is to our advantage that he has gone away and therefore the Spirit has come. As God's people in the Holy Spirit, let us stand and prepare ourselves for worship confessing our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful. God. We, we confess, confess that we are admonished to sin and cannot be ourselves. We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and end us, so that we may be delighted in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Sou o teu. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. And they lived and stood on their feet, 
an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will read Psalm 139 responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go? If I climb up to the heaven, you are there. If, my, if I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the animals of our sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will come over me and the light of the will return to night. Darkness is not dark to you, and night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. I will thank you because I am marvelously, marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. <laughs> Your eyes behold my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. The second lesson from the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost arrived, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared on them, or to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was speaking, was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native languages, Parthians and Medes, the em and Emilites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygra and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and, and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you supposed, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. First, no, we don't have a procession. Please rise for the gospel. This very house of the Lord that the Lord's people are fed 
with the pure spiritual milk of the gospel. Luke, in the second chapter of Acts, gives us that first account of Pentecost. The disciples are gathered there in Jerusalem, just as Jesus told them to do. And they are greeted with a violent wind and the fire of the Spirit in forms of tongues of fire dancing over their heads. And they're also in the city of Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost, were people from all nations. Not all nations present, but also Luke kind of includes all nations past. In other words, he is telling us that the Spirit brings everyone together, past and present. Pentecost refer reverses the chaos of Babel. And so what does the church do with this new life? It preaches. It proclaims. And Peter launches off into the very first sermon of Holy Mother Church, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, and the power of the Spirit is on the loose. And this is most certainly true in our Old Testament reading this morning from the prophet Ezekiel. Now just think for a moment what it might be like if this would happen to you one day. I said at the second service to the contrabands, imagine you've just finished your bowl of cocoa puffs in the morning, and the Lord comes to you and says, take my hand, and he leads you out to a place. Not just any old place, but imagine a valley. A valley as wide as you can see and as far as you can see, and this valley is filled with dead, dead, lifeless bones. Now you think matters can't get worse, right? <laughs> but then the Lord asks you a question. You're still thinking, I wish I was back with my bowl of cocoa puffs. The Lord asks you a question. Son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? What would be your answer? Bob Dylan has a good answer. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. We'll come back to Dylan in a little bit, but hang on to that. Really, now the prophet Ezekiel, he has two answers flowing through his mind. One, the one that he's thinking and the one that he finally audibleizes. What he's thinking is, to the answer to that question, can these bones live? He's thinking, not, not in a million years. But the one he speaks is, oh Lord, you know, <laughs> you know. Ezekiel takes the safe way out. But taking the safe way out is not the Lord's way. The Lord is just beginning with him. Son of man, prophesy. Preach to these dry, dead bones, and I will cause breath. I will cause life to come into them, into these dry, dead bones, and, and these bones shall live. And so Ezekiel does just that. He preaches a word to a pile of dry, dead bones, and soon flesh begins to cover the bones. Connecting tissue, sinews, all the upholstery of a human being is covering these dry, dead bones. Can you imagine the noise in the valley that day? All the clattering and the clacking of bones coming together and sinew and upholstery, everything being restored, everything came together. But there was one thing missing. There was no breath, no life, no soul in these, in these new creatures. So the Lord ordered Ezekiel, Preach to the breath, preach to the spirit, that, that very breath that brooded over the waters in the very beginning, stirring creation into existence, that very breath that the Lord snorted into the nostrils of Adam, creating the first human. The Lord says, preach to the breath, and he did. And they lived up, they stood up, up on their feet in an exceedingly great army. Now fully alive. And then the Lord tells Ezekiel the significance of the valley. 
He says, Son of man, this valley of dry dead bones is the whole house of Israel. Their constant disobedience, their daily turning away from me, following their own paths and desires led them to be lifeless, dead, dry bones. Led them away from their home to live in exile. The church is most certainly a gift from the Lord, a gift orchestrated and filled with the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, and so the church does what it's called to do. It preaches the word every week throughout the world. The church is charged with preaching the life-giving and holy word, breathing life into dead bones. People dried up from not hearing the word, people who are dead in the clutches of sin, People who are shuffling around in the valley of the shadow of death and not even knowing it. People who are bombarded, bombarded with the ways of the world. This is the world that the Lord has placed Holy Mother Church to preach to dry dead bones in the valley of life. Just like Ezekiel, just like Peter in Jerusalem, like Paul in Rome, like Augustine in North Africa, like Luther in Germany, and like here at Emmanuel in Lebanon. Preach the word, trust the spirit, and as the Lord says, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And the Lord does just that. He puts his very spirit within us. And here is the really good news. Here is the really good news. Jesus says in the 15th chapter of St. John, You did not choose me, but I chose you. That, my brothers and sisters, in essence, is the gift of baptism. Jesus has chosen us, claims us for his very own in the waters of baptism, seals us with the Holy Spirit, and marks us with the cross of Christ forever. That's what we were celebrating on Sunday with the Ten Confirmants, their gift of baptism that Jesus had chosen them, claimed them, given them the Holy Spirit, sealed them with his cross. Last week I had a wonderful visit with uh, Alice Craig, and we were talking about Pentecost, about the Confirmants, and so on, about baptism, and Alice, Alice said, uh, she said in and she gave me permission to use this. Uh, God bless her, she is a faithful disciple. Uh, Alice said, uh, baptism, baptism is simply the best day. For on that day your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. On that day your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What else do we need? Jesus says yes on that day, unconditionally to you in matters of salvation, in matters of life eternal. He does not give us a choice. After that, he gives us tremendous freedom to make daily choices. What kind of, I said to the confidants, what kind of ugly t-shirt you're going to put on that day. What baseball team you're going to root for, uh, and, and so on and so on. Those are choices we all get to make each and every day. And also on Sunday, the Lord welcomed them to his Holy Supper for the feast, for the first time, this feast of eternal life, his true body and his true blood. I try to impress upon the confirmants that they were affirming their baptism in a very public way on Sunday, but the Lord will give them countless opportunities day after day to just that. Perhaps even no sooner than this coming Sunday, the baptized are people who worship, right? That's, in all of my years of teaching confirmation, that was the one point I would emphasize over and over again, probably even above the catechism. Baptized are the people that worship. You know, Luther, Luther says, you know, if you stay away from the Lord's Supper for any length of time, if you absent yourself from the Lord's Supper for any length of time, you cannot call yourself a Christian. Period. 
So on every Sunday, the Lord's Day comes rolling around, we have the opportunity to honor the third commandment. Will the Lord find us in his house? Will he find us feasting on his true body and blood? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. You see, baptism gets you Jesus, gets you forgiveness of sin, gets you eternal life, but it also gets you an enemy. The enemy is none other than the father of lies, the devil. And he will work his will to keep you from walking in the ways of his enemy, Jesus the Lord. But know this, when we are in the Lord's house, he is screaming out in fear, for he has failed. When Jesus is coming to us in bread and wine, the devil himself is trembling. Therefore, the devil will do everything to keep you away from the Lord's house, from the holy banquet feast. And he will come at you with a multiple, multiple choices. And one of my sayings is that the devil always comes at us with good things. He comes at us with a multitude of good things. For example, sports is a good thing. It teaches us a lot about life, a lot about working together. But what happens on the Lord's Day when you have a baseball tournament or keeping the Sabbath holy? You have a choice to make. The devil gives us too many choices. He constantly sets up idols before us, trying to confuse us, whispers in our ears, telling us that you don't really need to go to church and so on. Forget about all those things you learned in catechism class and so forth. <laughs> Thursday night, uh, when, when we were having the exam, I think, I think one of the questions was, uh, how many books are there in the Bible? And, and most of the kids got it right away. I think it was, um, I think it was Calvin, Calvin kind of muttered to himself, 66. And I said, I said, so I got in his face a little bit. I said, Calvin, are you sure? Are you sure? Classmates, what do you think? Is Calvin sure? And you know, he, he stuck with his answer. He stuck with his answer. I said, Calvin, good for you. Because when you are right about matters of faith, don't let anyone take that away from you because even at that moment, it could have been the devil looking dressed up like Pastor Canopy, looking like Pastor Canopy, and trying to get you to go back on your faith, but he did not. Praise the Lord. Matthew Harrison, the fine pastoral theologian, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, recently noted that for some time the church, the culture, has been hostile to Christianity. But now there's a shift. Now we are entering into a time of persecution. To confess Jesus as Lord will most certainly have consequences. But in these times, we can lean on the Holy Spirit with all its gifts, returning daily to the waters of baptism, asking the Lord for strength and guidance and wisdom. Only in this way will our choices flow from the one who first chose you. Bob Dylan made that song popular, The Answer My Friend Is Blowing In The Wind, back in the 70s. Dylan was kind of considered a singer of protest songs, but really his protest songs were flowing from his religious background. They were flowing from the Judeo-Christian sense of prophetic ministry. The wind that was a blowing, that Dylan often sang about, it's the Holy Spirit he's singing about. A hard rain is going to fall? No in the ark. No in the ark. Actually, this, <laughs> this is kind of uh, ironic, but I just discovered that yesterday was uh, Bob Dylan's 80th birthday. So here we are referencing him on Sunday and Tuesday, and his birthday is right in between. There was a time in 1979 when Dylan took his, himself and his rock band to communist China. 
Now the media thought for sure that while Dylan won't be able to get away with any of those protest religious songs in China, he's going to play it down, play it soft. They were wrong. Every night, every night in godless China, I want to paraphrase, I want, I want to correct myself a little there, godless communist China, because there are many Christians in China. Dylan was taking on Caesar. He and his band opened every concert with his award-winning award song, Gotta Serve Somebody. Gotta Serve Somebody. It might be the devil, it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. That's what I was trying to get across to the conference on, on uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. Dylan took that, Dylan took that theme from the 24th chapter of the book of Joshua. With all of Israel standing on the banks of the Jordan River, ready to cross over into the promised land, Joshua preaches a sermon. He preaches a sermon to the whole house of Israel. He tells them that we are about to enter a land of many gods. We are about to enter a land of the gods of the people whom you have defeated. Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Joshua says this, For me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to serve the Lord. Now coming back a little closer to home than China, during uh, the Easter tide, you were kind enough to give me a couple of weeks off and I was able to spend some time with my family in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, you may remember back, uh, back uh, to the run-up to the election there, you would see these uh, yard signs from time to time. They were black background and then a number of horizontal lines and multiple colors running through them and each line had a different saying. You know, science is real, love is real, kindness, black lives matter, feminism, and so on and so forth. Okay, I call that sign the God of the, sec the the sign of the secular gods. For none of these entities on those signs have died for you. None of those entities have delivered you the gift of holy baptism and the Lord's supper. None of those entities on that sign have gifted you in the Holy Spirit, and certainly none of them have given you eternal life. So one afternoon, I was walking with my nine-year-old grandson Easton, and we were taking the dog for a walk, walking through the neighborhood, and up, a, up ahead I saw what I supposed to be just one of these signs. And so I was going to ignore it, avert my eyes, and so on, when all of a sudden my grandson started speaking words from this sign. And this is what he said. This house believes in the Holy Spirit. The next line was the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I was jumping for joy. I was hoping someone would be home. They weren't, unfortunately. I wanted to uh, thank them for that sign and maybe uh, you know, share, enjoy some faith matters together. Now that's a yard sign. That's a yard sign. My dear brothers and sisters, together with the confirmants, newly anointed disciples, we are declaring today, or any time we are in the house of the Lord, who are you going to serve? The Lord is delighted with all his love, the entire love of heaven and earth. And come tomorrow or the day after and the months and years roll by, we are given many opportunities to declare who you're going to serve. And the only life-giving answer is the one that's blowing in the wind. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come to your children and be their Lord. Come to us and be the Lord, the giver of life. In the name of Jesus, amen.
please rise as we sing our hymn of the day.
crucified, not just by his fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He has set us to heaven and has seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have dawn. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has sold it to the cross. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Lord, we thank you for the gift of Holy Mother Church, in which you claim us into your kingdom, you continue to preach to us your holy word, you forgive our sins, and you feed us with the bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for our ten young people who just this past Sunday affirmed their baptismal life by saying yes to you. Continue to keep them in the joy of Jesus. Continue to impart to them the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom, the comforter, the guide, and their advocate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all the baptized in the Spirit. And drive us to daily study your holy word, to daily pray in your holy name. Do not be content where we are this day, but pulling us deeper and deeper into the life-giving waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, Lord. Forgive us our sins. Turn our hearts and minds back to you. Save us from the path of darkness, and let us walk in your eternal light. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the congregation here at Emmanuel. Continue to strengthen it in the gift of wisdom, in the way that you would have them go. And please, especially now, be with Pastor Rep and his family in this time of transition. For the glory of your holy name and for the sake of the apostolic mission here at Emmanuel, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need of your healing grace. We continue to pray for Kathy Lehman, Ed Olson, Joe Rhodes, Alice Kreit, Don Schwanker. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your great mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And also yes. with you.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise.
Please rise. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.